Uh, a lot of people have been interested as to what I meant when I said uh, all of life should be treated as, uh, I think this is the way I, I phrased it, all of life should be treated as a rehearsal for death, or all life is essentially just a preparation for death. Um, sort of interesting that that came up, because I just recently finished uh, this, which is uh, a, uh, a fake mosaic made out of uh, bristol board and cardboard and glue and uh, uh, spray-on fake shellac. Uh, it's the ancient Greek gnothi se oton, which means know thyself. Uh, wise words uh, used by many people. Uh, it's generally agreed that the Greeks meant know that ye are a, uh, a man and not a god. Uh, when they say know thyself, it's not uh, saying that explore yourself because it's fascinating, it's know what you are and equally importantly know what you aren't. <laughs> um, what we are, apparently, is mortal, finite. Um, there will be a time when we won't exist. Uh, there was a time when we didn't exist. There will be a time when we don't exist. By the Greeks' reckoning, um, the gods are immortal. Humans are mortal. That's the big difference between the two of us. Um, the uh, Greeks actually often interchanged gods with immortals uh, when uh, they used the term. So it's gnothi se oton. Uh, could also mean uh, know that you are mortal. Um, and, you know, the uh, the ancient Romans had their equivalent, which was carpe diem, live today, because, uh, well, tomorrow you may not be alive to live. Um, you know, the ancients were quite... Uh, a lot less likely to hide from death. Uh, the obvious example of, the fa of, of death being right on everyone's face is the Roman arena, where you go down and you watch gladiators, which was just part of the fun. Uh, you got to see criminals uh, getting murdered, basically, by gladiators or torn to shreds by wild beasts or killed in various other fascinating ways. It was generally held that the sight of death was good for people. Um, and when you walked down the street in any Roman city, you generally saw all kinds of graffiti scrawled on the walls talking about death, about, uh, uh, you know, it just being around the corner, uh, carpe diem, live today, uh, all that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of people have asked me what I actually meant by my illusion, or why I brought my illusion to death into this, this existential thing. Um, well, um, I think there was one misconception I'd like to clean up, uh, clear up right off the bat. Uh, it's, I wasn't saying that all of life is a preparation, I guess, for the moment of death. Maybe I, it came across that way. I may have phrased it that way. I don't know. But every moment of your life, in my opinion, um, is enhanced in many ways by the knowledge of death. Uh, all of your life is a preparation for death. Now, you sort of say, okay, then you're preparing for death. Yes, but the, when you're preparing for something in the future, the, the, the impact goes both ways, right? If right now I'm preparing for my own demise, um, it's going to have an effect on me before I die, whatever I do now, because um, if this is preparation for that moment, presumably I will be thus more prepared as a result of my present preparations for death. It will affect me uh, when I die. But at the same moment, the fact that I'm preparing for death right now affects me right now. So it's not a question of um, a teleological thing. It's not a question of, uh, I don't know, chronological, I guess, uh, of going, of putting all my important things uh, off until the moment that I die, or saying that, that death is um, something that is the only real purpose of existence. No, it's. I think that drawing that moment into the present by preparing for it, uh, the effect goes both ways. Um, I prepare for death, which makes me prepared for death, and death, by being there at the end of the day, is 
preparing me to live the next few days, that I probably will be around. It'll allow me to put everything into perspective, won't it? Uh, some disaster takes place, I'm going to die. I get carried away by too much joy in this life, remember. Uh, the, uh, the Romans, speaking of that, uh, the high point of a Roman's life, the greatest thing that a Roman could ever possibly aspire to, I don't really see what the big deal is about this, but they, they thought the biggest thing you could possibly to aspire to uh, would be to have a triumph, is to a uh, conquering general was put on a chariot and paraded through the streets of Rome with this big parade, and everyone cheered and cheered and cheered and cheered, and he was basically, that was the greatest achievement a human, a mortal, could possibly aspire to. And as you were doing that, there was a special state slave that was um, stood on the chariot behind you with holding your laurel wreath over your head. You know, the Romans, they had a laurel wreath uh, for the victor, which you've got to wear for the rest of your life <coughs> because of this triumph. But he would also be whispering in your ear, remember, thou art mortal. In other words, don't get carried away by this overwhelming sense of well, triumph, of being in this triumph. You're going to die anyway. <laughs> um, so it's not just a, a, a depressing thing. It's a way to allow you to sort of enjoy yourself more in this life based on the fact that it's temporary. Whatever hardships you're dealing with are going to be abolished at the moment of death. And not to get too, too carried away by the wonderful things that could happen in your life, because tomorrow your circumstances could be completely different, and a few years hence, it's all going to be erased anyway. So it's healthy to understand what you are, to know yourself. Um, I get into trouble when I raise this. I think this is one of the points that I think people really get sort of miffed at me for you know, more than anything else, is when I say, it doesn't matter what sufferings you go through, because it's all erased at the moment of death. Um, <clears throat> this is my view of uh, Benatarian asymmetry, and again, I'm not getting into antinatalism. I don't want to get into that. But I like the, uh, the asymmetry argument, because he basically says that when you look, look at it, um, uh, if, you're, if you're not born, you don't have the possibility of suffering. You don't have the possibility of not suffering or of experiencing joy either, but because you're not born, you don't, uh, you don't miss it. Now, the, the, this screwy thing about that is, is that it only takes into consideration before and during your life. It doesn't take into consideration the after bit, uh, because no matter what happens to you, there is symmetry. You are nothing, you are something, then you're nothing again. Symmetry. <laughs> um, there is no asymmetry. It's just a gerrymandered asymmetry. But that's just one little thing. I think that's where I get into trouble. But uh, the issue is, though, um, this business of preparation for death. Um, the preparation works in two directions. I can think of no worse way to end one's days than thinking, oh boy, here comes the reaper. Here he comes with his scythe, and he's just about to take a good swing, and I'm looking at him, and I realize at this moment I have completely screwed my life up. I've made a complete pig's ear of the whole thing, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's too late. That must be pretty awful. I have an uncle that may have gone that way, although I don't know. I wasn't there with him when he passed on. I wasn't in his head. Um... <clears throat> So I would think that it would be nice to sort of lay there on one's deathbed when the breath is about to leave one's body and think, well, I did my best. Uh, and in as much as it's possible for me to prepare for this, I'm prepared. So here it comes. Nothing I can do about it now. But, you know, there we are. Uh, but by the same token, that works both ways. The fact that uh, preparing for death, preparing for the fact that no matter what happens, what happens to me? It's going to be erased. Absolutely and utterly. Uh, can, I would assume, allow you to endure a lot. Um, the fact that everything is transitory, including the worst thing you can possibly experience. 
the old time heals all wounds, uh, omnia transient, or even the one that I invented, I guess, by ex by uh, accident, omnia exeunt, everything leaves. <laughs> omnia transient says everything is temporary. Omnia exeunt says everything is everything will leave, will go away eventually. Um, that, if you ask me, is a way by which your preparation for death affects you as you are preparing. Uh, it's a funny thing the way that time works when you consider the fact that for each of us we're living on borrowed time. If we prepare for the future, the very fact that we've prepared for the future affects us in the present. If we prepare for death right now, it doesn't just prepare us for the moment when we die, it affects us in the present. <laughs> this one may take a couple of more videos. <laughs>